Happy New Year from 1011. KOLN KGIN TV, Nebraska's News Trust, presents the final edition of the evening news, sports, and weather. And a very pleasant good morning and welcome to our first newscast of 1985. Despite slick roads and the probability of more drunken drivers, the Nebraska State Patrol says no fatal traffic accidents were reported on New Year's Eve so far. And some bar owners in eastern Nebraska say the number of people celebrating at their establishment is a bit lower than the New Year's Eves of past years. That might be because some light snow and freezing rain prompted the National Weather Service to issue a traveler's advisory for southeastern Nebraska, and many people have decided not to risk going out for the evening. Authorities in Kansas, meanwhile, say that 10 people have died on Kansas highways so far since the weekend began. Well, today's final report of the legislature's Special Com Com Commonwealth Committee is leaving some depositors of the failed institution angry. The report says claims against the state on behalf of depositors are weak with respect to state liability. James Lessman says the depositors will be forced to go to court to prove the state is liable for the Commonwealth collapse. Lessman says the Commonwealth problem is not going to go away. A 21-year-old Lincoln man was charged today with first-degree murder. Terry Taylor is accused in the December 21st stabbing death of his roommate, 18-year-old Ben DeBates. DeBates' body was found in the trunk of his car. Taylor had first been charged with manslaughter, but today the charge was amended to first-degree murder. He's being held without bond. The Nebraska Supreme Court has rejected a motion for an out-of-court settlement that would have dismissed the North Platte Christian Schools pending appeal. The dismissal would have been in exchange for the forgiving of about $40,000 in fines owed for the formerly illegal operation of the unaccredited school. In a recent letter to Lincoln County Attorney Charles Kant and School Attorney George Clough, Clerk of the Supreme Court Kenneth Wade said the court agreed unanimously that it would permit the dismissal of the school's Supreme Court appeal of a district court contempt conviction, but the court was unwilling to approve any other conditions of the dismissal. On the national and world scene, a hijacked American Airlines jet is now in New York. It was its original destination before it was comm commandeered to Cuba by a hijacker who authorities say is a convicted mass killer. The man, a prisoner being flown from the Virgin Islands to New York, managed to grab a gun from one of his captors and forced the plane to go to Havana. The hijacker now is in Cuban custody and no one is reported hurt. American Airlines officials had another headache too to contend with on the top of the hijacking. Crew shortages at the carrier forced the cancellations of at least 275 flights on Sunday and Monday, stranding hundreds of passengers. Under a contract with the airline, American pilots can't work more than a certain number of hours each month. The airline says bad weather during December, which delayed and diverted flights, caused pilots to reach their maximum before the end of the month. 1984 wound up with a one-two punch for Texas. New Year's Eve tornadoes in the southern part of the state left at least 30 people dead. And up to eight inches of rain pelted eastern Texas, where rivers covered roads and forced some families to flee their homes. One person died and three others are missing in the floodwaters. Meanwhile, freezing rain iced highways from Oklahoma to Michigan, but the southeast ended the year by basking in unseasonable 70-degree warmth. An administration official says President Reagan will discuss the sensitive issue of Japan's restrictions on U.S. imports when the president meets with Japanese Prime Minister Nakasone in L.A. That's on Wednesday. Nakasone requested the meeting to shore up his political standing at home. <coughs> Federal officials hint that a secret organization may have had a role in the bombing of four abortion clinics in Pensacola, Florida. A federal judge Monday ordered construction worker Matthew Goldsby held without bail in connection with those attacks, which officials say involved very sophisticated bombs. All across America, millions of people are celebrating the dawn of 1985 with parties, parades, music, fireworks, or prayers. Hundreds of thousands of New Year's revelers are in New York Times Square, where they waited for that 200-pound lighted apple to be dropped from a building, possibly for the last time. The building's scheduled to be torn down. Winter weather is helping to slide in the new year across the Midwest with snow and freezing rain complicating driving conditions. Freezing rain and sleet glazed highways in northern Illinois and southern Wisconsin. Chicago forecasters predict six inches of snow for the Windy City, and authorities are urging revelers to stay off the streets. Meanwhile, a United Press international count shows there have been at least 218 traffic deaths nationwide since the New Year's holiday weekend began at 6 p.m. local time on Friday. News reports say the drummer of the British rock group Def Leppard reportedly had his arm torn off in an automobile crash near Sheffield, England today. A spokeswoman at Royal Hallamshire Hospital refused to comment on the condition of 21-year-old Richard Allen. 
Police say Allen and a Dutch girlfriend were riding in his Corvette when it left the road and overturned. The members of Def Leppard reside in the old industrial city of Sheffield in northern England. The group had a big hit in 1983 with their album Pyromania. The president of Poland is vowing that those responsible for the kidnapped murder of the reverend priest Pompieszko will get the punishment they deserve. In his New Year's address to the nation, the official charges that unknown conspirators instigated the priest slaying to destabilize the government. Sources in Beirut say warring factions and a Lebanese government military council have agreed to a total ceasefire. The truce reportedly comes after a six-hour meeting Monday of military commanders. The council set Wednesday as the date to start securing a key coastal highway leading to Israel's front line in southern Lebanon. And finally, a study released Monday shows the military faces a shortage of as many as 60,000 doctors, nurses, and medics, according to the study. And if a conventional war to break out, President present medical personnel could only treat one in ten wounded on the battlefield. The Heritage Foundation, which conducted the study, recommends that medical specialists be subject to the draft. We'll take a look at sports and weather right after these words. It's nothing short of miraculous. Researchers are finally discovering a way to prevent diabetes in animals. The Juvenile Diabetes Foundation is convinced that a cure for people can't be far behind. A cure. That's why they need your help now more than ever. The Juvenile Diabetes Foundation really can eliminate the nation's third largest killer. But it's not just a matter of time. It's a matter of money. The Juvenile Diabetes Foundation. There's a cure, and we'll find it. Elvis Presley, the most popular singer of all time, would have celebrated his 50th birthday in January. To mark this worldwide event, we present Elvis Memories, a different kind of special, created with love and understanding, and illustrated with very personal home movies and rare, never-before-seen film footage. Tuesday, January 8th at 7 here on 1011. On sports tonight, the West Virginia crush, Texas Christian, 31-14 Monday night in the Blue Bonnet Bowl in Houston. Kevin White threw three touchdown passes to lead West Virginia to a 31-7 halftime lead. He completed 16 of 30 passes for 280 yards, 240 of that in the first half of the ball game. In college basketball tonight, Kentucky upset 11th ranked Kansas, 92 to 89. Junior forward Kenny Walker threw in 36 points for the Wildcats. And number 15, Washington trimmed Lamar, 64-59 with forward Paul Fortier leading the Huskies with 18 points. On the weather scene, well, let's take a look first at northern Kansas. First tonight, occasional snow in the central and the east, possible 4 to 8 inches in the northeast, lows 5 to 15 degrees. And tomorrow, New Year's Day, clearing, cloudy with snow flurries, possible in the morning hours, and then clearing by the afternoon and evening. A highs in the teens and up to 22 degrees. And then the lows tomorrow night, about 10 in the west and 5 to well, from 5 below to 5 above in the east, so it's going to be cold. Wednesday, mostly sunny, a high of 28 to 35 in the west, and then the 20s in the east for Nebraska. Tonight, partly cloudy with snow flurries in the west and north, and snow flurries possible in the southeast. Our lows tonight, about 15 degrees or a little bit below. It should be about 5 in the southeastern part of the state. Very cold. Then tomorrow, clear to partly cloudy with a chance of snow flurries in the southeast. Becoming mostly clear by tomorrow night, with a high about 5 in the north, teens to the 20s in the panhandle, and the lows tomorrow night about 5 to 10. Then, on Wednesday, mostly sunny with a high in the teens in the east and the 30s in the panhandle. For Grand Island tonight, occasional light snow is possible. Winds northerly 10 to 20, and boy, that brings the chill factor way down. Low about 0 to 5 degrees. And tomorrow, partly cloudy with a chance of snow flurries in the morning hours, becoming mostly clear by tomorrow evening with winds northerly at 10 to 20, a high of only about 10 degrees tomorrow, and a low tomorrow night about 5 to 10. So it's going to be cold. Then, on Wednesday, mostly sunny with a high in the upper teens. For Lincoln and vicinity, tonight a traveler's advisory. The streets are slick. We may get one to two inches of snow yet, in the way things are looking. Winds normally 10, 20 to 30 miles an hour, a little bit gusty, low about zero, but that chill factor will probably be down around in the 40 to 50 below range. Then tomorrow, partly cloudy, a chance of snow flurries in the morning hours, becoming clearer by tomorrow evening. Winds northerly 10 to 20, a little bit gusty and cold. Highs only 10 to 15 degrees with those terrible winds. Low, about 5 to 10 degrees tonight. Then tomorrow, most, or Wednesday rather, mostly sunny with a high of 15 to 18 degrees. A little warmer, but still not too much help. 
Grand Island right now reporting snow flurries and 9 degrees. We have flurries here in Lincoln, and we're reporting 10. And from all of us here at Channels 10 and 11, we wish to wish you a very happy new year, and especially the ones that are working tonight. Walt Hartman out at the uh, transmitter, and that's in Hartwell at the Grand Island transmitter. Bob Best at the Channel 10 transmitter at Beaver Crossing. And here in the studio, Steve Berkey, Wayne Payton, and uh, also Scott Guthrie. And yours truly, John Ludwig, bidding you a very pleasant good night. This has been the 1011 Late News, just part of 1011 Strong's total news coverage. TV, Channel 10 in Lincoln, Nebraska, and KGIN TV, Channel 11 in Grand Island, Nebraska. An equal opportunity employer viewed by 276,000 families. KLN TV and KGIN TV now conclude telecasting for this day. Channels 10 and 11 return to the air again tomorrow morning at 5.30 with the CBS Morning News. Now the staff and management of KLN TV and KGIN TV wish you a very pleasant good night. KOLN TV Channel 10, Lincoln, Nebraska.